The Legend of Ametiotl. A long time ago, before there was time, there was Ametiotl, the god of duality. He was the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega, the everything and the nothing. He was man and woman, light and darkness, life and death. He was the creator of everything that exists and was. Ametiotl felt alone in the void, so he decided to create the universe with his power. He first created heaven, where he made his abode, and called it Omiakan, the place of duality. Then he created the earth, where he sowed the seeds of life, and called it Tlaltikpak, the place of that which has roots. Then he created water, air, fire and stone, and he called them Tlaloc, Kutzalkotl, Utsilapakli and Tezcatlipoca, respectively. These were his children, the four sons, who governed each of the four directions of the world. Ametiotl gave encouragement to his children, and taught them the art of creation. He told them to do whatever they wanted, but to respect the balance between opposites. He warned them that if they broke the harmony, the universe would fall apart and they would have to start over. The four sons obeyed their father, and created many wonderful things. They created the stars, plants, animals and humans. Each of them made humans in their image and likeness, and gave them a special gift. Tlaloc gave them fertility, Quetzalcoatl gave them wisdom, Hutzilopochtli gave them courage, and Tezcatlipoca gave them destiny. Humans lived happily under the care of the four sons, and paid worship and offerings to them. But there were also conflicts and wars between them, since each one followed his favorite son. Humans were divided into four tribes, each seeking supremacy over the others. Ametiotl observed everything from the sky, and he was saddened to see the discord between his children and his grandchildren. He wanted everyone to live in peace and harmony, but he did not want to intervene in his affairs. He respected the free will of his creatures and hoped that they themselves would find the path to unity. One day, one of the humans had a vision. He was a priest of Quetzalcoatl, and his name was Quitmec. In his dream, he saw Ametiotl, who spoke to him with a soft and sweet voice. He told her that there was a place on earth where all humans could live together, regardless of their son of origin. He told him that that place was an island in the middle of a lake, where there was a cactus with an eagle perched on it, devouring a snake. He told him that that place would be called Tenochtitlan, the city of the gods, and that a great empire would be founded there that would unite all the tribes under a single flag. Quitmec woke up excited and told his vision to his people. Many believed him and decided to follow him in search of the promised land. Others mocked him and called him crazy. Quitmec was not discouraged and left with his faithful towards the lake. After many days of travel, they arrived at the lake and saw the island with the cactus, the eagle and the snake. It was just as Ametiotl had shown him. Quitmec was filled with joy and gave thanks to the god of duality. He then ordered his men to build a city on the island and call it Tenochtitlan. Thus was born the Mexica Empire, which soon spread throughout the valley and beyond. The Mexica were brave and skilled warriors, who subdued neighboring towns and demanded tribute from them. But they were also wise and cultured, who built temples, palaces, schools and gardens. Tenochtitlan became the largest and most beautiful city in the world, and the center of civilization. Ametiotl was proud of his Mexica grandchildren, and blessed them with abundance and prosperity. But he was also worried about her ambition and his cruelty. He saw that the Mexica sacrificed thousands of humans in honor of the four sons, and that they despised other peoples. He feared that the Mexica would break the balance between opposites, and provoke the wrath of his children. One day, another of the humans had a vision. He was a priest of Hutzilopochtli, and his name was Moctezuma. In his dream, he saw Ametiotl, who spoke to him with a stern and harsh voice. He told him that there was a danger that threatened the Mexica Empire, and that it came from the other side of the sea. He told him that they were bearded and white men, who brought guns and horses, and that they came to conquer and destroy. He told him that those men were the envoys of Quetzalcoatl, who had returned to claim the throne from him. He told him that he should prepare for war, and that he should not trust them. Montezuma woke up terrified, and told his vision to his people. Many believed him, and decided to arm themselves and defend themselves against the invaders. Others doubted him, and thought it was a sign of weakness. Montezuma could not decide, and he wavered between war and peace. Shortly after, the white men, who were called Spaniards, arrived. They were soldiers and adventurers, who came in search of gold and glory. They brought with them a man, named Hernan Cortez, who posed as Quetzalcoatl's ambassador. Cortez approached Moctezuma, and offered him his friendship and his alliance. Moctezuma did not know what to do, and received him with honors and gifts. But he soon realized that Cortez was a traitor and an enemy, who wanted to take over his empire and his religion. 
a bloody war broke out between the Mexica and the Spanish, which lasted several years. The Mexica fought with valor and courage, but they could not resist the power of firearms, horses, diseases and betrayals. The Spanish had the support of many towns subjected by the Mexica, who saw in them an opportunity to free themselves. The Spanish besieged and took Tenochtitlan, and completely destroyed it. Moctezuma died a prisoner and humiliated, and with him died the Mexica Empire. Ometiogo cried for his Mexica grandchildren and cursed them for their pride and his violence. But he also wept for his Spanish grandchildren and cursed them for their greed and his cruelty. He saw that the Spanish imposed their culture and religion on the people of America, and that they erased much of their history and identity. He saw that the Spanish mixed with the indigenous people, and that they created a new race and a new nation. He saw that the Spanish forgot about him, and that they called him God. Ametioto retired to his sky, and remained silent. He hoped that one day, his children and his grandchildren would be reconciled, and that they would remember their origin and his destiny. He hoped that one day, his children and his grandchildren would restore the balance between opposites, and live in peace. The Legend